Okay. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We thank God for today. Today is the day the Lord has made. Bible says that you need to rejoice and be glad in it. And today we have come to Mount Zion. We have not come to man. We have come to Mount Zion, the city of God, the holy nation, the mighty numerous of angels. We are going to worship this morning in the morning in the Lord. So this morning we invite our Dickness Florence Bando to lead us in time of opening prayer. Amen. And we welcome.
We are going to pray and commit this service unto your hands, Lord. Holy Ghost, come and take control. Fill us and make us whole. We invite you. Let us pray and invite the Holy Spirit to come and take over. Lord God Almighty, this morning we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Invite the Holy Spirit of God to come and pray. Come and Come and pray. 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 And shine be with us, you be with us, be with us. In the name of Jesus, this morning. Holy Spirit, Lord, 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 we pray. Lord, we pray. Lord, we pray. Lord, we pray. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, come in our midst. Come in our midst. Come and reign. Come and reign. Come and steer the affairs of this morning service. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You have come before. You have come to Mount Zion. You have come to Mount Zion. You have come to you. You have come to you. You have come to you. You have come to Mount Zion, Lord. We have not come to our man, but we have come unto you. You have come unto you. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we have come before you. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, let the Holy Spirit reign. Lord, come and reign. Come and reign in our midst. In the name of let us see your hand. Let us see your mind. Your hand in the name of Jesus. Come and do wonders. Come and do wonders this morning in our midst. In our midst. In our midst. We, we give all the affairs of you. We come and take charge. Come and take charge. Come and take charge. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. We commit his mind, his daughter, his tongue, and his oratory into your hands. We pray, Spirit Divine, take total control. Everybody, 
that love. You will change us, you will transform us, and you will renew us, revive and restore us, O Lord. We believe that as we have come, before we leave, but that you will do a miracle in our lives. Ask God to search our hearts. Mm. If there is any iniquity or sin, mm. oh Lord, have mercy on us. Mercy. We come before you because we are going to dine with the Lord. Mm. So any iniquities, any sin, any unforgiveness, mm. Lord, search our hearts. A radishes shall ye mo. It's an answer. We na wunim. We see a tree new impo wunim. Enti ena no pay. The boni on the the seen and unseen. A radish boni ya kind and ya young kind. The ni pon na yong. Now so a yab boni wo yoni so. A radish says say ya kuma ya power nim. A radish fire and pon so ni na chaye. A radish na says say ya kuma. And so na ya timi no atun say di. A radish ena no pay. Search our We commit everything concerning our thoughts. Everything concerning our whole being. If we have been in any sin, if we have gone and indulged in anything that is not contrary to what you expect us, we stand before you. We ask for your mercy. We ask for your grace. We ask for your forgiveness. Rather than no pay, won't change. And I rather than me na ebi ane eba. Yes, yes, I rather than. Wa wa ya boni fe fe ni anko poi. Ratify and form so in a chain. Forgive us, O Lord. Cleanse us. Wash us in the blood, O Lord. Cover us under your authority and your power. We are going to pray and commit all those who are on their way. Those who are at home, each and every one, Lord, bring, us, bring them safely so we all can worship together. And give you glory. Yes, <laughs> Give them traveling blessings. Cover them under the auspices of your protective power. Father Lord Almighty, it is our prayer, Lord, that you leave them here safely. If there be anything that will be a distraction, anything that will cause them or prevent them from being here. And the Bible says, "You need not fear for nothing." We need not to be afraid. 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 We Lord, please, we, we need you. Come and fill us and let us not go home empty. We know you are with us. Your presence, you say your presence will not leave us. So, Holy Ghost, fill us. We thank you. You are compassionate God. You are merciful God. Your grace is sufficient for us. We thank you because you are every day you renew us morning by morning. Yes. We commit the speaker unto you, Lord. Speak through him. Yes, Lord. Anything that is coming, Lord, let us receive in a clean heart yes. and be the doers of the work. We thank you. Thank you. We thank you yes. for taking control. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We thank our deaconess so much for leading us in terms of opening prayer. At this time, we are going to sing songs of uh, the blood songs or songs of uh, last supper songs so that it prepare ourselves, it prepare our mind for what is ahead of us. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus.
Jesus God's own Son, precious love of God's desire. So that we will come boldly this morning to dine with him. Because only sin can separate us from God. So I want you to lay all your sins oh, before the Lord. The Lord, the Lord Father, forgive we us come before sins. you. In the mighty name of we Jesus, Lord, our Lord, hearts Almighty, before you. As we come before you, we ask you, Lord, says that only, only, only forgive sin us that our sins. Us from, from you and us. Father, cleanse Lord, us I, by I, the I, power I, of the blood. Wash us in the blood. I would say that if we say we, know, we, we do not Father, sin, we say we are lying. Lord, forgive us all our sins. 
Let the blood dance what it does best. Let the blood does do what is capable. Let the blood of Jesus may the power in the blood. All our sins. Now pay you no more. Ya fumo coin so. Ya fumo coin be 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 so. We ask you for your mercy, Lord. Have mercy on us, O oh Lord. Para wash us, O oh Lord. Let your glory, O oh Lord, mighty God, be revealed unto us once a day. Let our mercy, then love, love and kindness, O oh Lord, be demonstrated unto us. In Himself, I don't have the nature. Nano pay we are mobile. We provide for each other. Unforgiveness. If you have something in your in your heart, mm. if somebody has offended you one way or the other, Jesus. just let it go. After all, the bonnet chair now for in church. Let let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Don't have any unforgiveness in your sin, in your heart. Don't have anything, 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 anything. Bitterness. We di yao yao di can block all your blessings. In the year, a man you be behind shall also. Yes, we are not paying our house or the ninja. For the ninja, I see more 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 Ready, <laughs> All that is looking for us is our spiritual worship. Is the body of Christ. Is your body. What is looking for your body? What are you doing with your body? 
Are you yes, gossiping with your body? Are you fornicating with your body? Jesus, your Jesus. body must be holy. Holy, 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 holy. We need I want you to thank God that God has forgiven you mm. all your iniquities, all your sins. Mm. The, that, had, the, that thing that is harboring your heart, you have already let, let, let it go. Mm -hmm. The bitterness, the unforgiveness, anything that is harboring you, I want you to open your mouth and, th and thank God that Lord, thank you this morning that you have taken oh, away Jesus, all my sins. You have taken sin. all we the burdens away from me in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and thank back God. Oh Lord, what you have done. We, we are, are trusting. Are trusting. We 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 thank you, Lord, for your mercies. We thank you for your love and kindness, O Lord. We thank you for the power of the blood that continues to wash us. Yes, Jesus. We just want to say thank you, Lord. Yes, want to thank you, Lord. That was it. Bring peace. Yes, Jesus' blood did not fight for vengeance, but Jesus' blood plead for mercy. Jesus' blood plead for, for, for forgiveness. Jesus' blood plead for love. Jesus' blood plead for unity. Jesus' blood plead for humbleness. As you come before the Lord this morning, I want you to prepare your heart and your mind through all this service as you are going to dine with the Lord. I will to the Lord. We all know that in the, in the, in the uh, New Testament, one of the one of the uh, the king or who is worthy invited two so many people to come and and dine or come and have some dinner with him, but the Bible says that one person came there without wearing the garment or the wedding garment or the dinner garment, and the Bible says that the king threw that guy away. Let all our our garment not not be the out, outward garment, but be be what the inner one. If you want to receive us this, this morning to his own. Mojanti na me wonkwa. As I sing this song, we invite our our sister who is going to lead us in terms of worship to come and lead us in terms of worship. Yes, Mojanti.
thank the Lord for bringing us together. Yes, the Bible can watch in Hebrews chapter 12. Well, see, we are in the company of a numerable number of angels. Yes. And we also have the mediator of the new covenant, which is Jesus Christ. So this morning, we are before the living and active God, the one that does not change. He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And now, Baba <laughs> Jesus <laughs>
Jesus 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 Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. 
woni ya ni ya power ya mame no kaya wase mama me kwaje kwa mama me kwaje kwa ano so yes lord we lift our cup oh lord of my god of salvation and bless the name Jesus. Jesus. Holy God, Father, we bless you.
Amen. We thank our sister for leading us in terms of worship. We welcome each and every one of you to be in the house of God. We welcome everyone. We welcome you to be in the house of God. We welcome you to be in if today is the first time or you have been here multiple times but you haven't got the opportunity to just introduce yourself it's the opportune time to just if today is the first time of worshiping with us show by hand you know nobody is here for the first time so we have been here for multiple times amen I want you to relax and take your nose, your pen, so that you can write something down. You are going to hear the word of God from God Himself. Amen. Amen. So we are going to listen to the word of God, and I invite our former presiding elder who is now our elder retired elder to give us the word of god our presiding elder former presiding elder mike apia kubi amen as he comes give crap offering unto the lord amen Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And we are praying. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. We are here because we are here. We thank you for this opportunity and we thank you for opening the way for us to come into your presence. Because you are here, we will be successful. Because your presence breaks every barrier. We thank you, Father. This is not about me. It's about your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, divide this word into thousands and supply it to everyone who has a need. I thank you so much for giving us this spirit to have a, a, we have a fellowship together. We thank you the Holy Spirit is here. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. 
Hallelujah. When, when I was a child, uh, with my older brothers in the, in the same house, in fact, we had a big family. In our house, we were, um, were, were over 100 in, a, in that house. Na na mi sano na mi wo enyanom eme man penifu na ebusi ambi free money a door so pa ya kanya ya bro ha. And I, in our neighborhood, we had a guy who dealt in incantations. Na na ya wo obi abranti bi e wo baby and mantemwa ya tiano na ndi juma wodi ni se wondi no kanche. Uh, he was invoking uh, what we call saints. Now, on the no, he's telling a Ghana a canon of free saints. Now, if you if you know the book, they call the book of uh, seven, six and seven, seven books of Moses. Of Moses. Mm -hmm. You know that book. If you know that, if I've heard that book. Now, your book could be a near to the seven and six book of Moses. Now, you are there branch here, no, and no, no, And this guy will come. If I was about nine years old, then I. I've no idea we in film could not pay. He will. He will come to the house. We invited him. Uh, if I, if you're a child, you believe everything that you're told. You know that. Now, now you are told some friend, my name is Ray. We film. We buy a day. You sent it. Now, the idea of a baby, I just told me. And uh, so we went to a room, and uh, he had uh, he invited a guy my same age that he dubbed holy because in, in those times when we say holy, it means that you never touch a woman. You remember all those stories. Now what the abrante be di nechi ba no ani min fiye be ya pe. Now what catch you say abrante ndo wa ya kron kron. Now sabre ya kasi obi ya kron kron neche se obi ya on fane hong kan obada. And uh, this guy. We'll be drawing some diagrams, uh, some diagrams, and uh, they put a, a glass full of water in the in the middle of the diagram, and asked this guy, as he was in, he was inciting, I uh, mean, reciting all these incantations, and they asked this guy to look in the in the water and whether he would see this so-called saint. Whenever this guy said no, he will repeat the same process. Until this guy will say that, yeah, that guy uh, has manifested this uh, sin has manifested. And then, then he will ask him, what is he saying? And this guy will say a lot of things. You know what? Not long ago, I asked this guy what you were doing. Was it true? He said that they all lies. Nobody appeared. Nothing. But I'm telling you that Jesus is here this morning. I said Jesus is here this morning. Say this after me. Lord Jesus, you have said that you are, you are the shepherd. And your sheep hear your voice. And they follow you. I'm your sheep. So give me a listening here. And a heart of wisdom. As the message comes. I believe that I hear your voice. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. You know, during the Bible says last Wednesday, uh, in the introduction, there were some statements I want to repeat here for you, uh, for you to hear. There was this thing that people are enlisted in the army of Jesus Christ from different backgrounds. They come with different ideologies and beliefs. In order for them to serve well in this new environment, they have to be taught the doctrine 
of the army of Jesus Christ. How are they related to this, the topic I'm going to speak to this morning? The topic is understanding the power of a united army. I remember somewhere in the early 70s, uh, my classmate in the high school, uh, my classmate and I and some friends, we went to the military academy uh, school in Teshi. That was Officer Cadet Academy. And I think they are still uh, still this. And uh, this friend of us, the mate, he used to be in the army himself. I mean, he was far older than us. But he humbled himself to come. We were in form two. He humbled himself to come back to school. And so when we went to the officer cadet, uh, we were there with his friend, the friend, our friend's friend, and a, a guy, a certain guy, a guy came. And uh, we, we were made to understand that this guy used to be a weakling and a, some, a timid guy. By this time, his demeanor and his physique had changed. Because he had been changed from the civilian attitude to a military attitude. So we asked, we asked this guy, the other guy, the what made a change. So he said that when any, anyone I, I, I came there, they had to drastically change you from this civilian attitude to that of army. So when you come there, they have to change you that you are no more a civilian. Now you have been transitioned to a military man. So the way you walk should change, the way you talk should change, the way you think should change. The attitude should change. So when you see a civilian, you know that you are no more a civilian. You are an army man. You know the way they behave. There's also a complete change of culture. You know, once you are born again, you change culture. Because Christianity is culture itself. And once you are born again, you are automatically enlisted into the army of Christ. Whether you like it or not, you are in there. So your culture and the way you live is changed. Your culture is a way of living. Second Corinthians 5.17, the Amplified Version says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, that is grafted in, joined to him by faith as Savior, he is a new creature, reborn and renewed by the Holy Spirit. The old things, the previous moral and spiritual condition have passed away. Behold, new things have come because spiritual awakening brings a new life. So unless you have this, uh, this mindset, you have this understanding, you will still have that mindset of a civilian in the military. Now, so one, Nancy, I say, yeah, we are 
and that will not work. Because you have to transition from the sleep, civilian way of living and thinking to that of the military man. Because the army works as a unit. It's not go alone thing in the army. We work as a unit. We work as a group. And every army needs unity to succeed. And if there's a breakdown of discipline, there's no way the army will succeed. A breakdown of discipline can happen in various ways, but let, let me list three of these. It could be that there's a revolt in the in the in the in the, in the, in the ranks against the leadership because there's misunderstanding. Or maybe there's a break of communication between the ranks. Or there could be a lack of respect for leadership. Or lack of respect for each other. And there's there are multiple ways uh, that uh, this compromise can happen in the military. I mean, it can be compromised. The Church of God is the army of Christ. And as an army, the army can be compromised too when there's lack of discipline. And we lose the fire of the Holy Spirit. You know, some time ago uh, in a, a family family meeting, one of our family meetings, one of our members said that now we can't feel the presence of the Holy Spirit in our meetings again. I mean, he said that. You know, in fact, we all share this same concern sometimes when something happens like that. Then you say, why not stay? I mean, maybe you're asking yourself, why not stay at home and just do your own thing? Because if church uh, just appears like a common meeting, why not stay home and enjoy yourself? But the genuine question we have to ask ourselves is that whose fault is it? Is it God's fault or is it my own fault? Has the church misplaced its priority? When we talk about the church, we are not talking about leadership, we are talking about you and I. So we have to ask ourselves that is it my fault? Am I doing what I'm supposed to do? Am I holding the, the other side of the bargain? Listen to what Psalm 103 says. How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. I want us to say this line. Just say that after me. How good and pleasant it is. When God's people live together in unity. You see, so the psalmist is saying that it is very good and pleasant. When God's people live in unity. Listen to what he's saying. It is like precious oil poured on the head. Running down on the beard. Running down on Aaron's beard. Down on the collar of his robe. 
It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion. For there, yeah, repeat it, for there. So what is the meaning of the there? The day is when we, 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 we stay together in unity. There the Lord bestows his blessing, even life evermore. So we have to ask ourselves, what we are seeing, whose fault is it? So how do we get unity in the church? I want to read Ephesians 4, verses 2 and 3. Uh, Paul highlights about five of these qualities. I will come to that. Ephesians 4, 2 and 3, the Amplified Bible says, With all humility, forsaking self-righteousness and gentleness, maintaining self-control with patience, Bearing with one another in unselfish love, make every effort to keep the oneness of the spirit in the bond of peace. Each individual working together to make the whole, the whole successful. So Paul outlines about five qualities here. The, he's talking about love, humility. Um, humility has to do with not thinking of yourself as better than others. And he's talking about gentleness. And he's talking about gentleness is talking about considering others and forfeiting your rights. He's talking about patience. It's talking about zeal. No, These are five qualities that unite the church. Number one, love. The one aspect of love that I want to talk about is speaking one language. Speaking one language. I mean, what do I mean by that? You know, there's a scripture in the Bible, I mean, Genesis chapter 11, verse 6. Maybe it may, the anger will, be, will seem negative, but God is using this to show us how one unity comes to a place, what happens. Genesis chapter 11 verse 6 The Lord said If as one people speaking the same language They have begun to do this Then nothing they plan to do Will be impossible for them no. One of the tools that has divided a group is language. You know, language will either divide a group or bring or unite a group. My grandfather he used to work as a uh, he, he used to work in the, in the military, I mean the civil engineering side as a carpenter. I mean he was not he was not a military man, but he was working in that, that unit. And he learned a language there. Certain language is no not his own language, but he learned a language with those who were working with. He, I mean, he spoke it fluently like no, he was born there. And uh, there was this headmistress in the second school, I'll mention, I guess second school in Kumasi, I'll mention the name. This headmistress, I mean, she was very popular. And uh, whenever she, he went there, he spoke the language of that woman. 
afei na ma me bia wo hwe o hwe school fo bi so me body am be hunti me body no sa me nana no akpo ho no ma no one is ma me no esa ka ma me no so kasa pepepe because this woman knew that this man was speaking her language they became friends na na me so wo hunse wo mo nyina mo kasa kasa ba ko no ne me nana no be ya dan fo fo pa so he sent uh, three of, of, uh, of his daughters and my sister to this that school. Maybe they, maybe they were not qualified, but because he spoke the language of that woman, that woman opened the way for him. All because he spoke her tribal language. You know, the people of Babel, Babel were able to build this tower. They were, I mean, they reached a place that God saw that, no, these people, I won't allow them to do that. So, because they were united. If I leave them to do that, they will achieve what they, what they are purposed to do. So, let me confuse their language so that we won't speak the same language. Maybe, <laughs> But we know that God, God is a God of unity. Is that not right? But how will you work against some people who are united in their purpose? But whenever you work against God's plan, God will come against you. So these people speaking the same language, they were able to achieve the purpose they had, they are planned. So what language will bring Christians together as a group? Are they speaking in tongues? Speaking in tongues has divided the church more than any other language. First Corinthians 13, 1 says, New Living Translation says, if I, speak, if I could speak all the languages of earth and of angels, but didn't love others, I will only be a noisy gong or a clanging, a clanging symbol. So how does the language of love work? Listen to what Jesus did. All said about Jesus. Philippians 2. Is there any encouragement from belong, belonging, uh, belonging to Christ? Any comfort from his love? Any fellowship together in the spirit? Are your hearts tender and compassionate? Then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another and working together with one mind and purpose. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. What attitude did Jesus, did Jesus have? Though he was God, listen to that attitude, he was God. He did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, it's so amazing when sometimes you hear another, I mean, a member of a church speaking bad things about another member of the church. Sometimes you don't even know the whole story. Don't. I mean, you just heard the tale. I don't even know the head. I just repeat what you heard. You don't know the whole story about most of the members here. You just say bad things about them. 
You know, some people have some a kind of habit they don't like. They have tried in various ways just to quit that. Maybe they don't have that fortitude to do it. God is the only one who weighs motives. People are trying to quit the bad attitude that they have. But because you don't know the whole story, you just go about bashing them. You know, we hear so many people saying bad things about some people's children. You know, sometimes people will be saying some bad things about a pastor's children. You don't know how much they have tried and fasted and prayed for their children. But you forget that they are also human beings like you. Don't let anybody compare your children with others. What you see now is the beginning. You don't know the end. One thing I know about the children of this church the Lord, what the Lord has purpose for the life will come to pass. Because God, we have a covenant with the Lord. He knows the end from the beginning. So if you see anything bad about my children, I mean, hey, we are not God. Their day is definitely coming. Believe that no matter what goes on in the lives of your children, the Lord will rectify that. Just speak the language of love. What the Lord has planned for the lives of the country. The Bible says that we should bear with one another in unselfish love. The second thing Paul talked about was humility. So with all humility, forsaking self-righteousness. And that humility has to do with not thinking yourself of yourself as better than others. You know, I can never be you and you can never be me. Even in trillion years, I can never be you, can never be me. God has made each, each of us unique. And he has brought us together to achieve a purpose. That's why Paul compared the church to the body of a human being. Whatever affects you affects me. Whatever affects me affects you. So I have to compliment you. You have to compliment. You have to complete me. And, it, and we have to defer to each other. When I'm not good at a certain place, like an eldest, if I know I'm not good in this area, I have to defer to the one who's better than me. I mean, when you do that, when you do that, you don't lose anything. All that you do is that you are lifted in the eyes of the people. If you defer to me, it doesn't mean that I'm bigger than you. 
say, Oh, bro, who wants to see a mama, my prime, my me, be, you may be a was and Kawood, yeah, and don't just have a such channel. It's just that we are complimenting each other for God's work to go on. Now, the Tian is saying, you know, we have one boy, and who said the baby, when you're me, Juma Bekosto. I respect the presiding elder because of the office that he occupies. Now, presiding elder, me, the poor man, if he said, no, I'm far older than him, but I have to respect the office. Anyway, coming Thursday will be my 68th birthday, so you have to wish me, you have to wish me happy birthday in advance. 68. And you have to, you have to bring the gifts too. You have the gifts. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm announcing that in advance. Ah. You know, you know, one thing we we don't do good in the church is that we don't we don't you know, we don't give gifts, especially to our uh, our leaders. We don't. Now they tell us to form. They say they are to me me to me say me to me me to 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 uh, but, now, but now I'm not presiding here. I can see it more. You know, I'm, I'm saying that not for saying sake. Look, whenever you give a gift to a leader, they, whenever the, the, the leader lifts the gift, that leader will bless you. Now the says, or so we have to honor our leaders. I mean, I have some people here who have blessed me enough. And I always pray that the Lord will bless you. So that it's not only me, so that the blessing will spread to others. So we have to respect and honor the leaders. And extend that same honor and respect to the pastor of the church. Number three is talking about gentleness. And uh, it has to do with considering others. I've said that and forfeiting your rights. So you don't only look at your own interest, but you look on the interest of others too. You see, you see, life is not only about you. Look, if you want everybody just to look at you, everything should be about you, you are not on this earth. And that's not how the church functions. So it's not only about you. If, if Jesus I mean, thought only about himself, he would never have come down to that verse. So Paul is saying that he is exhorting us to have the same attitude like Jesus had. Think about others too. As you are doing that, you are sowing seed in their lives. And that seed will come back in handful to you. The fourth one is patience. It says maintaining self-control with patience. You know, Christians are the most impatient people in the whole world. Sometimes, if we wait a little longer about what we have heard or what we have seen, we will see better results. Because sometimes we make decisions based on what we have heard. So in order not to look stupid at the end of the day, just be patient. Let, let me tell you a story. Let me tell you, our time is gone. Let me tell you this story about a certain pastor who was, uh, I know about now he's dead. He said the story in 1985 or so. 
he was I mean, in Canada. And he said that he was a senior pastor. He was, a, I mean, in the church, he was the most popular pastor in the church. The whole town, they knew him. And uh, something happened. The junior pastor, I mean, committed adultery with a certain lady. And this spread out to the media. And all, sometimes, you know, the media reports that sometimes they, it was very sensational. The, uh, the pastor of uh, Church of Pentecost on 5024, Freedom Drive, has committed adultery. That's what the caption was. So everybody thought that it was this senior pastor. When he heard it, he was so furious. And uh, he took a pen and paper. He was, I mean, writing to debunk this news. Not only debunking that, but was saying bad things against the junior pastor. And uh, I mean, he stayed on it for a day and started praying over that. And God said, look, please don't send it. Don't send it. So he decided not to send it. Sometimes if you want to fight the war by yourself, you end up by losing. So the battle is mine, not yours. So when he obeyed the Lord, eventually the truth came out. And what he had wanted, the Lord did it more than what he had thought would happen. Sometimes we want to protect our reputation. I'm an elder of the church. Why should this happen to me? I'm a president of this society or this group. Why should this? Look, I will not stay for the, I mean, I will not tolerate this stupidness. I will have to answer. If you want to go that route, the Lord will leave you. Do it. And at the end of the day, you will end up losing. We have to protect each other. That's fine. But let's wait for the Lord to act. The last one is uh, was talking about zeal. Make every effort to keep the oneness of the spirit in the bond of peace. So we have to make an effort. So whatever is binding us together, we have to maintain that bond. The Bible says that we should do all we can to bring peace. It says as far as it depends on you, make peace with everyone. And if you are a Christian, it depends on you. Hallelujah. Amen. So you are a peacemaker. Because where there is no peace, there is no unity. And purpose is divided. That's the reason why they are not in flow from the top down. So where there's no peace, there's no unity, where there's division, the demons have a full day. How do I know this? Let me say this in a, a Because when I want to read James 3, 13 to 18, he says this. Listen to this. If you are wise and understand God's ways, prove it by living an honorable life. Doing good works with the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you are bitterly jealous and there's selfish ambition in your heart, don't cover up the truth with boasting and lying. For jealousy and selfishness are not God's kind of wisdom. Such things are earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. For wherever there's jealousy and selfish ambition, there, will, there you will find disorder and evil of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure. It is also peace, loving, gentle at all times, and willing to yield to others. It is full of mercy and the fruit of good deeds. It shows no favoritism and is always sincere, and those who are peacemakers 
will plant seeds of peace and reap a harvest of righteousness. So where there's no peace, where there's no unity, where there's division, the devil has a full day. He will further divide the church. He will make sure that. Because what we have given him the ammunition to do that. Ammunition to do that. That's, that's the, I mean, that's the environment that the devil wants. The devil wants all the bad things to happen so that he will further his work. Look, if you want anointing to work in this church, then we have to make effort to do our part. In the Old Testament, whenever there was a covenant, there was a meal. They had a meal. The covenant meal, I mean, confirmed the covenant that they had made. And they all ate from the same bowl. One bowl. So all the pit that comes from your mouth, they are all in the food. So we eat from that. So if we are not one, it means that we can't eat from the same bowl. That's why Jesus broke just a loaf of bread, one bread. Broke it. And, and they drank the one from the same cup. Even Judas was there too. So this table, this table is a symbol of the unity that we have. We share the same fellowship. This, this table represents the same bowl that we are eating from. So if there's no unity, we can't eat from the same bowl. We want the Lord to work. We want the fire of the Holy Spirit to burn the church. But we have to create the avenue for him to do that. Are you part of the problem or part of the solution? God bless you. Hallelujah.